Children approved of the move. Uh, they were happy where they were, uh, and Paul found it extremely hard to make the adjustment. Um, at his new school, um, he was completely different. Uh, he was a loner who found it difficult to make friends, and he lacked self confidence and was totally unmotivated. So, Aww. again, we've got head traumas. Yes, we've got that tick. Um, we've got sort of unstable childhood with a bit of bullying involved as well. Tick. Yeah. Um, to make matters worse, okay. Paul... With what, me? Same. This is same. all you. I'm just waiting for the uh, the next thing. Well, <laughs> I'm just... Maybe we should make a tick sheet one day between the two of us and see which one is more likely to become a serial killer than the other. <laughs> um uh, to make matters worse, Paul grew into a, a big lump of a lad, um, so he was quite a large chap, uh, much taller and a lot uh, fatter than the other kids. This is not, I've copy and pasted some of this, so this isn't necessarily the language I would use. I would have said something like uh, festively plump or chubby. Um, he, he does get quite big. Let me see if I've got a, a photo of him, actually, as a kid. I think I do. I don't think he's... F- what? Because... I think of fat as, like, people who, like, are stuck in bed. See? Look, here's a little photo of Paul, age nine. Oh. Oh, he's a cute kid. He's a cute kid. Cute. Very smiley. Kid. Very smiley. Very. He looks like he could be, like, one of the little rascals. You know? Looks very happy, chappy kid. Uh, if you guys want to see any of the photos that we're talking about in the podcast, make sure to go over to our Facebook page, Adventures in Murderland. And uh, when the... A podcast gets put up there. We put up all the pictures as well, so you can have a little uh, little video of your own. Um, so yeah, people weren't very nice to him as a kid. He was a little bit showy, but that's not a big deal. That looks like just like a puppy fat, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so when he was little, uh, instead of uh, playing with like normal, uh, quote unquote normal, because you know what really is normal. Um, instead of playing with like you know not like normal kids or like. T- toys, action figures, yeah. ball, balls and things like that. Um, he instead uh, played with knives, uh, clubs, uh, homemade slingshots uh, that would fire um, ball bearings, so like actual metal oh, ball bearings. Which, you yeah. know, imagine if you got one of them on the side of your face. Fuck. Um, and then at uh, a very early age, um, he started to uh, show some peculiar um, sort of personality traits. Um, he would regularly dissect his sister's teddy bears uh, with his homemade knife. Uh, and when he was 10, uh, he stabbed the family kitten and hung it from a tree in the backyard. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, very... Strange behaviour from a child. Um, if I had that child, I, I would shave his head first to check if he had the uh, the omen symbol on the back of it. <laughs> 666, fuck. Um, later on, uh, while working at what what would be his last place of employment, uh, he allegedly slaughters and, and dismembers two goats uh, in a paddock. Bloody hell. Store. So he, he's quite... Um, Quite prone on animal abuse, this yeah. particular uh, particular person. Uh, it's strange because you know the, the, a lot of these people. When you read about them, there just seems to be a lot of um, similarities between things that happen. Like we mentioned the, the head thing and everything. Then also, you know, it starts off on small animals, maybe like cats, like his sister, or oh, teddy bears, like I said, sister's yeah. teddy bears, not real things, moves on to a small cat, then a goat is a little bit bigger, it's all, um, it's all kind of a, a progression, this sort of shit, it seems, anyway. Uh, just before his 13th birthday, uh, Paul was charged with stealing a car and was released with a warning. Um, I don't know why he wasn't put away for uh, fucking killing the cat or anything. You know, at least getting some help. Um, two months later, he was in trouble again and charged with making a false report to the fire brigade. Uh, theft and willful damage were also included among that charge. Um, at 15, he forced another boy to masturbate in front of some children and was charged with a soul. Fuck, that is dark. I, for- I read these the other day. I haven't read through these in a, little, a few days, so I forgot some of this shit. Assault, that, that must have been so horrible for that poor boy. That's gross. Um, and, and the other kids. And the other, I mean, well, I don't, I don't, I don't know what the other kids were doing. The other kids could have, they not have walked away. Maybe he had his slingshot with him. I don't know. Kids are easily yeah. spooked, right? So he could have just said anything to them and they probably would have freaked the fuck out. I know I would. 
1992, he entered into a relationship with a lady called Sharon Johnson, uh, who was a girl he met while working at a Safeway supermarket. Uh, a job that came to an end uh, when he allegedly deliberately knocked down a woman and child uh, with a convoy of empty shopping trolleys. So he just sort of runs into a woman and child with his... Uh, oh, dear. With the, I'm, I'm getting it. It's like, you know when the shopping trolleys are like w- all, all put, stacked yeah. together? And then he I'm presuming it would be like that, yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Um, Paul then applied to join the Victorian police force. Um yeah, but not like Victoria is the place where yeah, yeah, this yeah. town is. Yeah. Not like he didn't want to join police force in Victorian era. I, I, I'm not dressed that dumb. in Victorian garb. <laughs> no, no, I'm not that dumb. I didn't think you were, but just in case there was uh, another person out there who may have got mixed up thinking he wanted to go back and be a Victorian police officer. Um, <laughs> Uh, but he was rejected on the grounds that he was unfit due to his, his massive bulk. Um, he does get a bit more plump as, as time goes on, but nothing that I would say would be, like, debilitatingly plump. Not in any way, shape, or form. Definitely not. Um... So, by 1993, uh, Paul was a complete social outcast. Um, He was unable to hold down a job through a mixture of laziness and incompetence, and also fucking smashing into women and children. Um, He was now nicknamed John Candy, um, after the actor. So, his friends would call him John Candy, after the actor. Which is a shit nickname, to be honest with you. I mean, John... It's... Why not just call him Uncle Buck? Like, call him Uncle Buck. Like, that's a better name. Don't call him the actual actor's name, right? (laughs) Right? You don't do that. It's a bit weird. It is. You don't call someone John Candy. That's an, that's an actual other human's name. I'll just call... Yeah, I don't know. Uncle Buck. I'll just call him Buck. That's, these people don't know how to come up with any names. Um, uh, at this time, Paul developed a fixation with death, uh, the macabre, and also horrific murder movies such as The Stepfather, uh, which he would watch repeatedly. I've never seen The Stepfather. I don't know what that is. Never maybe heard of it. Maybe we'll visit that at some point. Uh, no, I don't, I've never heard of that myself. Uh, Paul had moved into a flat uh, with uh, Sharon. The, the girlfriend he had. Okay. Uh, Paul was unemployed and Sharon had to hold down two jobs by selling um, selling things over the phone. Uh, so with plenty of idle time uh, on his hands, it wasn't long before some uh, very unusual things started to happen around the flats which they were in. Right, okay. Uh, one particular tenant arrived home to find her flat had been broken into and her clothes and engagement pictures had been slashed. Uh, another one caught a glimpse of a strange man peeping at her uh, through the window. And uh, also, this is around about the same time when our introduction story sort of started with the cat. So, Ooh. about this time, uh, the cat thing took place. So he was brand new into the building then? Uh, he wasn't... F- he wasn't... Yeah, he hadn't been there for years and years and years, maybe about 12 months or so. And this is where, um, after this point with the cat, uh, things get uh, even worse in this story. Uh, on Saturday, June 12th, 1993, uh, the partially clothed body of 18-year-old student Elizabeth Stevens was found in Lloyd Park on the Cranbourne Road in Langwaring, uh, which is a short drive from uh, the town where he was at in Frankston. Is it, did you say Langworthy? Langwaring. Oh, right. Langwaring. Or Langwaring, maybe? I don't know. That sounds more like Irish. Langwaring, not Scottish. Uh, but the teenager had been reported missing uh, the previous evening by her uncle and aunt, uh, who she was actually staying with at the time. Uh, Elizabeth was found naked from the waist up and had had her throat cut. Uh, there were six deep knife wounds to her chest, four deep cuts running from her breast to her navel, and four more running at right angles, forming uh, like a crisscross pattern um, on her abdomen. That's horrible. Uh, Elizabeth's face had several cuts and abrasions on it, uh, and her nose was swollen, uh, possibly uh, showing that it had actually been broken. Uh, her bra was up around her neck. Uh, now, usually you'd probably expect me to say that she had also been sexually assaulted, right? She wasn't. She was not sexually assaulted. Which, when I was reading this, I was like, oh, because usually, usually it would go with 
you know, you, you read these stories and you see these horrible things that happen to to women, and usually it's some fucking dick just trying to, you know, fucking get his end away in some horrific way. Um, but yeah, this one, uh, no sexual assault, but still fucking equally as horrific. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a bit odd that the fact she was only naked from the waist up mm. as yeah. well. Uh, the killing was as senseless as it was brutal. Uh, Elizabeth didn't have an enemy in the world, so she just kind of like your normal girl. Do you want to see a photo of her? Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, just a very ordinary, pleasant-looking lady. Yeah. 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 Very ple- She looks like someone's mum who I would know. Like, she looks like... You know when you go around someone's house and you're like the friend's mom? She's got that sort of vibe, Rocket. You know? Very friendly, warming, someone who goes, oh, yeah. do, you want, do you want to stay around for tea? That sort of thing. She gives me that vibe. So Elizabeth didn't have an enemy in the world, like I say. Uh, so the attack, the police had assumed it had to be someone random. Or maybe uh, they thought it was a rape that had gone wrong. Um, so the police mounted the, this huge big uh, search for the killer. Oh, by the way, this is a story where the police do good, by the way. They are very good in this uh, instance. Um, the police uh, used a they life... They would because women are involved and it's just not gay men. Well, <laughs> maybe, maybe. You said that with a bit of animosity behind you, though. Like, yeah, they would because women are involved. No, I don't mean it like that. I just mean because it's, it's women. It's just... I mean, it doesn't quote, seem like unquote, it's... quote normal. I, I know what you mean. You, it's, not, it's not gay men getting yeah. killed, you mean. I guess, I guess. Um, and it's not to say that all police departments around the world have, are obviously like that with, with murders that are gay, but the ones... A, a couple that we've spoke about definitely have been like that. Uh, but I'm sure um, this police department would have been fine either way. Um... Uh, so yeah, the police sort of um, got a huge search going. Uh, they got a life-size mannequin at a roadblock um, uh, near the bus stop where Elizabeth uh, was last seen. Uh, what they were hoping was that someone may recognise the life-size mannequin that was her, or uh, the person who she had been with uh, may sort of stop and see it and maybe wonder what it was and yeah. question it and stuff. So they were, tr- they were sort of keeping an eye on this thing. Very strange um, way of going about it. That yeah, I've never heard I've of that before. Never, yeah, I've never heard of it. But it, um, it's a unique way of dealing with things, I guess. Um, so the police knocked on every door in the district and questioned bus drivers and passengers who were on Elizabeth's last known bus ride. Uh, they checked out every known library in the vicinity of where she was last known to have been. Uh, but unfortunately, all that uh, didn't turn up anything. Nothing happened. Mm. Um, Then we jump to uh, the evening of July 8th, 1993. Uh, This is all 1993, by the way. Okay. Uh, 41-year-old bank clerk, uh, Rosas Toth. I think I may have... No, I don't have a photo of her. Uh, She was making her way home from work um, when she was violently attacked by a man who said he had a gun and then he had tried to drag her into a nearby reserve um i'll just call it toth because the name is spelled r-o-s-z-s-a which i'm I'm probably gonna be sure i'm pronouncing it wrong so i'm not gonna try yeah. it's more insulting if i pronounce it wrong can i can i ask something yep what's the reserve uh a reserve is like like a cranny like a little like an alleyway i'm, I'm making a movement with my hands here into to show you the thing like a, a bit like a ditch right okay. like a ditch but not okay. a ditch a bit like a ditch but not a ditch uh, so Miss, uh, Mrs. Toth uh, put up a fight for her life uh, during which the man pulled out clumps of her hair uh, and she bit his fingers to the bone on several occasions fuck yes Yes, bitch, you fight for your fucking life. Um, she eventually fought him off uh, and just uh, happened with torn stockings uh, and she had no shoes. Uh, she managed to hail down a passing car uh, as the person who was attacking her sort of saw that and then and then ran off. So good on her for fucking fighting. Good, yeah. Uh, Mrs. Top had little doubt uh, that had she not resisted so strongly, uh, she would have most definitely been murdered. Uh, judging from the previous thing i probably would have agreed on that as well um it's so strange the fact that you know in my head i'm thinking girls should have 
you know, sort of like self-defense training from a young age. But then I'm thinking, why the fuck should women have self-defense training? I mean, I know it's good, but the world shouldn't be in the state of place where we need 